Okay. Uh, this one. Okay, so hopefully, Miss Strickler, can you just put your thumbs up if you can see my screen, please? Perfect. Okay, so the aim of um, the workshop is to share with you how phonics is taught and how reading is taught in our school. Um, to try and give you a bit more confidence in how to help your children with reading and phonics at home. To teach you the very basics of phonics so that you understand um, how you can best support your children. And it will give you some of the language that we use in school which you might not have heard of before, but some of your children might be using it at home. So that might, that will help you to understand the language. To go through the statutory phonics test that the children have to do in year one, and also the SATS test the children sit in year two. Um, and to give you some examples of resources and activities that you can do at home that can help your children. And obviously, as I said throughout, just put the questions in the chat box and we can, and we can try and help you as, as we go along. So first of all, what is phonics? So phonics is an approach that we use to teach children how to read and spell. So not, so not when some of us were younger, we might have learned to read in different ways. Um, but now everything's moved to phonics. So that's how we teach children how to read and how to spell. There's lots and lots of evidence that shows how effective phonics is in teaching reading and it will help your child to become a better reader and writer as they go out go as they move throughout school life because it teaches them the skills on how to break down work break down a word which will help them with their spelling as well so at our school we use letters and sounds as an approach to teaching phonics. So letters and sounds is just a big document that we get lots of different resources from and lots of different ideas from. And it lays out, it structures the um, teaching of phonics very, very clearly. So we use lots of resources from letters and sounds, which you can get some of them online as well. Um, but we also use resources from different places as well. We use Jolly Phonics. Um, there's loads of different websites that we use and we show some of those later on. So you can have a look at those um, at home as well if you need, if you, if you want to have a look through them. Um, every child from foundation stage and key stage one learn phonics every day and it's at their level. So we assess the children really regularly with their phonics so we know exactly where they are which sounds they need to work on and the children so the children are learning the sounds that they need to know um, it's a very fast paced approach so you cover lots and lots of different sounds um, and then we the, we re revisit the sounds as well um, once they've all been covered um, letters and sounds includes lots of different games as well um, which we've got, we, they're all on our website. So if you need to have any ideas, you can have a look on the website, but it's loads and loads of different activities and games. And there are six phases in letters and sounds, which I'm going to show you um, in a second and talk you through. So something you'll probably find quite useful. Um, and again, this PowerPoint will be on the website. So don't worry about kind of remembering it all now. Um, but these are the terms that we use really, really frequently in school. And we might also make comments in our reading records. So we might say, um, your child is struggling with this digraph, or your child is struggling to segment and blend. So if we use those kinds of that kind of terminology, this should kind of help you to understand um, what that means. So the phoneme is the top term, and that's the smallest unit of sound that's found within a word. So it's the sound that you hear. For example, in bed, you've got bed. That's three phonemes. It's three sounds. In fish, you've got fish, which is three phonemes. So it's the smallest unit of sound. And I'll show you a bit more about that as we go on. 
the grapheme is the spelling of the sound. So it's what you would see on paper. So for example, the sound is written as a TH, the sh phoneme or sound is written as an SH grapheme. So the grapheme is what it looks like or how it's written. Um, a digraph are two letters that make one sound when you read them. For example, sh, sh and m, mm, they are digraphs. A trigraph is three letters that make a sound. And a split digraph um, is when a digraph is split by a consonant. That's when it becomes a split digraph. For example, the AE split in the word uh, made or the EE split digraph in the word these. So that's what a split digraph is. And then you've got your CVC and your CVCC words, which just stand for consonant, vowel, consonant, or consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant. And there's some examples down the side. Tricky words. You might also hear them being called common exception words. So at the start of the year, we send home a list of words. And at parents' evening, we sent home a list of words. And those words are the common exception words or the tricky words. So they're words that don't follow. The, the, you can't sound them out phonetically. They, you just have to learn them. They're tricky words to learn. So they don't follow the um, phonic rules. Um, and then the final one is segmenting and blending. So we say this all the time in school. Um, sometimes you might hear segmenting being called sounding out. So segmenting is saying each sound. And the blending is when you put all of those sounds together. And we use something called sound buttons in school. And sound buttons are these lines and dots that are underneath the words that you can see on the screen. So this is an approach that comes from letters and sounds, but we use it all the time. And it really helps the children to be able to see the sounds in the words. Um, and it also helps you to understand if they can recognize the sounds in words as well. So for example, the word chat obviously is an alien word. It's not, it's not a real word, um, but that's got the ch digraph at the beginning, which we would underline. And then it's got at, so two sounds at the end, which you would just put the button on. Or cat is k at, so you would put the three dots underneath each sound. And obviously chicken, you can see, has the digraph and then the, the second k digraph in the middle. So that's how we represent the different sounds. So I'm going to go over to hopefully Mrs. Angus, if she's there. I'm in Mr. Williams' room. Okay, Miss, yep. Do you want to talk through nursery, Mrs. Angus? Yes, we will. Um, before we can start, obviously, building on their phonic skills, we need to sort of really work on their listening and attention skills, and this is something that we focus on in nursery. We um, do a lot of um, singing, um, perhaps maybe not so much at the moment, but we like to introduce the the phonic rhymes so they're familiar with the letter sounds because we have a lot of children that come in with their and they can sing the alphabet song they know their letter names but it's um, um, linking that with the letter sounds so we teach um, we're teaching their listening retention skills and then we're building on that and once we feel that those children have those in place then we can start um, introducing lots of different sound work and that might be environment, uh, environmental sounds it might be um, percussion sounds um, so we're working on the sounds and listening to sounds all the time and then we'll gradually bring in and we follow the um, the sat pin which is the letters and sounds first um, sort of set of letters so you, um, the, the children at the moment are looking for objects that start with the s and the a sound. And something that we focus on as well very much is um, saying and hearing the pure sound. 
and not changing the sounds. So there's lots of emphasis and lots of modelling by the adults of um, the sound ah and the sound s at the moment. And we're not changing that to a s or when we introduce other letters like the p, the p it's not per. So it's that's vital that um, adults model and the children hear those pure sounds. And we work with the children. So when they've got those listening skills in place, then we will we'll take them on and we'll learn the skill that the letters and once we've got um, a few of the letters in place then we can start playing the the segmenting and the blending games with them but it's very much the listening and the attention skills that we focus on for for nursery okay miss scotchford yep thank you and then if we go to uh, mr williams or mrs arthur so you can talk about the early years well, we don't do as much singing because I can't sing as well as Miss Angus. So <laughs> we go on to phase two and phase three, and it starts off in phase two for us. We work our way through it, and by now the children have already learned or gone through all the phase two sounds. So we think um, our expectation is by about Christmas, the children should know their phase two sounds. And then by the end of the year, so the end of reception, they should know the phase two and the phase three sounds. And that would be them being on track. And then we try to, throughout the course of the year, make sure they do a lot of blending of those sounds to make sure they come up with words, CVC words, etc. cetera, from that. Is that okay, Miss Scotchford? Yeah, thank you. Marvellous job. And then year one, do you want to explain how you teach your, phonic, your um, phonics in year one? Yeah, so um, we'll sort of recap what they learn in early years, um, looking at their phase two and phase um, three. Um, and then once the children are secure, we move on to phase four. Um, and we then we look at phase five. Phase four doesn't introduce any new phonemes. It's focusing more on reading and spelling longer words with ones they already know, um, sometimes with consonant clusters. So a lot of children sometimes struggle with things like brr and tr for trip, kh for clap. So we're just trying to teach them how to put those sounds together. Or you can get that at the end of the word as well, like nd for mend or m for damp. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for phase four. Um, phase five, so our children will need to learn, they have to know phase two, three, four and five by the end of year one. And um, they sit a phonics screening test for that, which I think there's a slide for that later. Um, but as you can see, there are a lot of sounds that the children need to know. And there's a lot of alternative sounds as well, so. Okay. Yeah. So it's really important that the children not only can recognise the sounds, but they can read them within a word by the end of year one. So you'll see later on with the phonics screening test, they have to be able to read the sound within a word. So it's really important um, that they don't just recognise the sound, but they can read it within within a word. So. As well in year one, they learn different variations of um, the phoneme. So the fact that the er uh phoneme can be represented with all of these graphemes. So the grapheme is how it's written. So you've got the u r er, i r er, e r er, e a r er, and o r. So there's lots and lots and lots that the children uh, are learning, um, and which is why we revisit it throughout the whole of um, key stage one. We revisit lots of this in year two as well. Um, and as the children move to year two, the spelling has to become more accurate. So they have to be able to recognize the correct grapheme and use the correct grapheme when they're writing. So there's lots for them to kind of take on. So like Mrs. Angus said, um, it's really important that you don't say the letter name, you're saying the sound. So it's not the L sound, it's L. So you're saying the sound and not the um, letter name. So there was a video on here which hasn't uploaded. So if I... Yeah, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Right, let me just go back onto Zoom. Um, I think it's this one. And don't forget to share sound. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So hopefully you can see what's on my screen, Miss Strickler. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. This just shows you an articulation of the phonemes uh, we've just spoke about. Eh. Eh. O. A. A. E. I, O, U, U, A, O, U, A, O, I, E, E, U, B, K, D, G, H, J, U. M, n, p, qua, er, s, t, v, w, x, ya, z, sh, ch, f, v, n. Okay, so that's kind of useful so you can see the the shape what her mouth is doing because when we teach phonics we try and make sure all the children can see our mouths when we're teaching so they can see what our tongue's doing what shape our mouth is making and that really helps them to um learn how to articulate the sound properly so, okay So phase six, going on to year two. So phase six is, uh, they're at the point then where decoding, so sounding out the words should become automatic um, and reading should become much more fluent. We revisit the sounds daily um, because we all know that children forget things quite quickly. So over the summer holidays, they do tend to forget some of those sounds. So we spend lots of time revisiting them. Um, and then it goes on to lots more different, all the kind of different spelling patterns. Um, and also we do lots and lots of work on comprehension when they come into year two. So they continue to do lots of embedding of their phonics. And we look at comprehension skills like prediction, making inferences, um, looking at the spelling patterns, and looking at past tenses, irregular past tenses, so lots of those kinds of things. We always get lots of parents asking um, throughout the school what inference means and how to explain inference. So I found a video um, and it kind of explains what inference means. So I'm going to play it to you and hopefully it works. Um, it explains it in a bit more kind of like an adult way, which you can understand it a bit better. How was my day? How was my day? How dare you ask me that? Well, all right. Since you ask, I'll tell you how my day was. First, the car broke down on my way home from work. And then, when I eventually get home, I find out the dog has run away. Finally, my husband tells me he's lost his job. I am so very, very unhappy. Cut! Where'd you get that line? What line? The line about being unhappy. That's not in the script. It's not? Roll that back. See here? Car broke down. Dog ran away. Husband lost his job. See? Nothing about being unhappy. Well, I made an inference that she was unhappy. An inference? What's that? I read the text and thought about what I know, and so I made an inference that the character is unhappy. See, we know her car broke down, and that's always a hassle. Then her dog ran away, and that's really sad. Finally, her husband lost his job, which is always bad news. So... I added these things up 
and made an inference that she must be pretty unhappy. Inference, huh? I like it. Okay. Okay, so that kind of explains what, what we mean when we say inference. So you're looking for clues within the text, and there's lots of that when it comes to the SATS test in year two. There's a really useful skill to, to be developing when the children are reading. So let me just go along. So what happens when your child is struggling? So if your child is really, really struggling to read a word, so obviously try and stay calm, which can sometimes be quite difficult if they, they are really, really struggling. We've all been there. Um, and then it's thinking, is it a segmenting error or is it a blending error? So I'm going to ask Ms. Strickler to be my model <laughs> and she's going to pretend to be a child who is struggling with a segmenting error. The d -og dog was b -er -eaten. Breathing. So that's showing that she doesn't understand. She can't recognize the owl phoneme within that word. So now she's going to show you a blending error. The m -n man had a k oi n crin. So she can't, so she recognizes the sounds within the word, but she can't blend them together. So the most important thing to do if, if children struggle with blending or segmenting is to try and stay calm, to try and not read the word for them, because if you read it for them, it's not teaching them how to, how to, um, tackle a word when they get stuck on their own. So I would encourage them to look for the sounds within the words, see if they can recognize the sounds. You could have a sound map, um, which will come, which we can show you at the end. Um, if they really are still struggling and you've gone through all those different things, you've asked them to look through the sounds, you've looked at the sound buttons and they're still really struggling, then you can always sound the word for them and they blend it. So like this, Mr. Strickler. Oh no, sir, I'll do it. The man counted his coins. So then the child would then blend the word together. So you can sound that out for them if they're still struggling. So then the year one phonics test. So do you want to explain, Ms. Strickler, what happens in the year one phonics test? Yes. So the year one phonics test is a statutory test and it takes place in June. All the children have to sit the test. Um, it's really important. We don't actually tell the children that they're sitting a test because we don't want to put them under any unnecessary stress or pressure. Um, and we prepare them for it entirely at school. They don't need sort of um, to be sitting any practice papers or anything like that at home. Um, if the children don't pass, then they resit it again in year two. If they fail it again in year two, they don't have to t retake it again after that. Um, and obviously, as Ms. Scotchford said, we begin the teaching really for the test is, starts in early years. Um, the test is made up of sort of two parts. Um, it's got two sections. In section one, you will see um, looking at mainly at phase two and phase three they'll have alien words, which are words that aren't real. Um, and they normally have a little picture next to them. So like the top one on the right there that says um, and then it also has real words as well. So the children would have to be able to read the real words. And um, sometimes the alien words try to trick them and look like they are real. Um, and children have in the past blended them and then blended them and tried to make it into a real word. So it's really important to sort of remind them to just stick to segmenting and blending. Um, we use lots of things to help the children in school. Um, one of the things that's really good for them is uh, phonics play. Um, I think you might have used that maybe in the lockdown. Um, but the other thing that we say is really good is using the sound mats with them. Quite often we play bingo sound mats with them and just sort of say a sound and get them to put their finger on it. And, and just see if they can basically get all the sounds. Is that all right, Ms. Godfrey? Yeah, so yeah, so it's, it's, re it's making sure that, again, the children are getting used to segmenting and blending words that they are unfamiliar with. So the point of the alien words are that the children don't recognize them. So it's actually assessing whether they can segment and blend accurately. 
because they're not real words so i've never seen them before so this video i'm just going to show you a, a snippet of it it's on youtube and it's um a department of education created to show you how to do the phonics test so it just kind of explains it shows you really what it will look like when the children um do the test so it's all verbal um i'm just going to fast forward it the child sounds out the letters and then correctly blends them to the non-word yed. She uses the wrong sound value for the vowel letter. Yed. Children do not have to sound out the letters before saying the word or non-word. Imp. Imp. There is a pause between each letter being sounded out, and therefore the non-word has not been blended sufficiently. Emped. The child has added an extra sound to the non-word. Emp. Sheb. The child has confused the letter B with P and then incorrectly pronounced a real word, ship. So that kind of gives you a bit of an understanding on what's allowed and what's not allowed in the test as well. So it does have to be fairly accurate. Um, Sorry. And that's why we do lots and lots and lots of practicing. And we obviously, um, we, we practice lots of alien and real words in school as well. And you can have that conversation with your children. So on phonics play, there's lots of alien and real words on there as well that you can have a look at. So if we just go to the next slide. So then moving on to year two. So when they are in year two, um, again, it's a statutory test that they do. They sit them in May. Um, and we do, there's four tests, two reading and two maths, and we do one a week usually. The reading papers, all children have to sit all of the papers, so one's slightly harder than the other one, but all children sit them. Um, and they're based on reading a, a passage and then answering questions on it. So again, the children don't know that they're coming in and doing the test. Because again, like Ms. Strickler said, it adds too much pressure, but we do prepare them in school by giving them SATS style questions during guided reading and parts of, part of the lessons. We show them the layout of the test and we try and make it a bit, we try and make it exciting. Um, they get new pencils to use, which they always love. <laughs> They're always really excited by. So they actually quite enjoy doing them, to be honest. Um, so we, we don't sort of suggest that people practice tests at home, but we do give you ideas on how you can prepare them um, by asking sort of really, you sort of by questioning them when you're reading with them. So this is just an example of a page from a past test paper. Um, and I picked this example because it shows how we would expect the children to use inference. So question number four says, why did JJ paint the top of the shed? And in the passage, it says, these steps are a bit wobbly. And obviously there's not an option that says the steps are wobbly, but instead there's an option that says the steps were dangerous. So they have to make an inference when they are reading that text. So when you're reading with children at home or when they're reading to you, you could be asking them questions similar to that, which encourages them to make inferences based on what they're reading. So that's an example of one of the papers. And this example I picked because it shows the importance of vocabulary. So more and more we're seeing in the SATS papers that there's a lot that the, the vocabulary that they're expecting children to know is quite, quite tricky sometimes. Um, so it's just, again, to focus in when you're reading with your children at home, to have the discussion about what different words mean. 
Um, for example, this talks about a jumble sale. Um, and, you know, not many children will know what a jumble sale is. So it's having those conversations. The word clambered, that's quite a tricky word. So it's you, you could then have a conversation with your child about what does that mean? How could you could you use a different word instead of clambered? So it's developing a vocabulary in that way. And in school, we call them magpie words. So they're words that you might want to magpie, so sort of take it from the book and you, they might want to use it when they do their writing. So it's kind of different. It's a focus on vocabulary, really. And that's kind of what the SATS is like, really. There's lots of questions that, that um, are based on the vocabulary they see and making inferences. So, yeah. We have a hand raised. A hand raised. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure I can unmute. We have one question. Yeah, who is um, it from? Um, could you unmute yourself? I'm not able to unmute. Could you unmute yourself? person who has raised their hand who has a question. No? I can't okay. see. Or maybe put it in the chat box and then we can answer it. We'll keep going yep. and we'll come back to that. Okay, so um, EY first, do you want to talk about how you can help children at home? Please. Uh, hello, it's Mrs Arthur here. Um, yeah, so ways of supporting your children at home with their reading and phonics. Um, we encourage you to read every day with your child, even if it's just for a few minutes. It might be sharing their reading book. It might be reading them a bedtime story. It might be reading from a comic or something like that. But just to enjoy that time together, um, reading and talking about what you're reading. And they're not forgetting to write it down in their reading diaries too. Um, don't read the words for them. Ms. Gottford um, has sort of touched on that as well. Encourage them to segment and blend as far as you can. Um, read everywhere. So environmental, print, could be road signs, street signs, cereal packets, on tins, um, anything like that. Um, yeah, reread things to check they make sense sometimes children might not quite grasp what they're reading they concentrate on reading the words but the actual sentence itself um, they perhaps don't understand so just check um, that it makes sense um, encourage the children to spot the sounds in the words um, I think this is particularly useful when they're doing phase three and they're looking at digraphs they don't always see the digraphs in the words so they might they might segment it as a <sighs> rather than a ch sound. Um, encourage them to use the pictures for clues because um, again they get very hung up on reading the words but actually they can glean lots of understanding from what they're reading from the pictures as well. Um, ask them questions about the book um, and encourage them to use expression and to read accurately. Um, lots of the reading books do have questions in either the front or the back that you can use as a guide um, to help you. Um, introduce children to lots of different vocabulary. Um, give your child some made up words to see if they can, they can use their sounds to decode the made up words. Um, practice particularly the digraphs, the trigraphs. Point to words in the book for them to read in a random order as well, um, because sometimes they get into the flow of reading it's sometimes it's guesswork so if you read if you point to random words it that just kind of checks um that, that they can read the word and most important importantly enjoy sharing your reading books with your children thank you, thank you mrs arthur so then the same really for years two to four so um much everything that mrs arthur's just said um will continue to help your children read as they leave year one and move on to year two to year four. Um, 
again, I'd say really focus in on that vocabulary. Some of the books that we have in school have quite challenging vocabulary in. So if the children are reading in their head all the time, we don't really know if they're understanding what they've read. We don't really know if they're reading it accurately. So although there is a place for reading in your head, and that's an important skill to develop, it's really important that children are also having time to read out loud because they need to be practicing the expression in their voice, um, making sure it's fluent, all those kind of things are what's going to make them progress in their reading. So it is important that they continue to read out loud. Um, in terms of SATs and helping your children with the SATs questions at home, I think sometimes we obviously love children using their imagination. That's really, really important. It's one of the most important things is developing their imagination. However, in, when it comes to SATs tests, we do say to them, don't use your imagination because sometimes they can then they're sort of picking out an idea from their imagination and they're not necessarily referring to what it says in the writing, in the text. So if you ask your child a question and they answer it, maybe just say to them, how did you know that? Can you show me where it says that in the writing? Could you show it in the text? And that way you're, you're known sort of where they're getting that information from. So lots of that oral work um, will really help them with their SATs. Um, looking at the words that they can see rather than that use their imaginations. SATS, for SATS question as well, just encouraging children to listen really carefully to the question. So when they're reading the question in the SATS paper, sometimes they don't read it carefully. Um, so it's really trying to figure out what it is that you're asking them to do. Um, and again, with the, the, the phonics screening test, regular reading with the ch children is what's going to help them best. So reading every single day, giving them lots and lots of words to, to segment and blend. You could give them alien words. If you go on phonics play, there's loads of um, resources on there, games that you can play um, that are really excellent to help with the phonics test as well. So then just finally, looking at reading levels. So um, it's really important that um, we don't rush the children through the reading levels. We want the children to experience a whole range of books. Um, we've got loads and loads of books on each level. And if we rush them through the levels, they don't get that breadth. So we, we try and spend time on each level, making sure the children read different books, different genres. Um, and also developing their comp comprehension skills on that level, um, making sure they're really fluent. So a rough guide that we use is in reception, a secure, a child that reaches age-related expectations at the end of reception would be reading a level two book. Um, on sort of a, a variety of different level two books and they can read them and answer questions based on that book. Year one would be level four at the end of year one. Year two would be level seven at the end of year two. Year three would be level nine and year four would be 11, which would be a, which would be a free reader. So we need to make sure they're not just on that level, but they can really answer questions about the book and, and that kind of thing based on that level. And then, oh, sorry, finally, just some, just some um, websites that you might find useful that I've linked on there. And um, there's Phonics Play, Geraldine the Giraffe, which is that giraffe puppet that's got a wine glass <laughs> in her mouth. Um, <laughs> Mr. T's Phonics on YouTube is that man at the bottom who's put loads of videos on which are really great for teaching phonics. Uh, the letters and sounds I've linked on there and then Spelling Shed as well um, is excellent for teaching children to read keywords and also spell them. So going on that regularly will help as well. And that's the end of the um, presentation. Are there any questions that um, came out? Just 
some about these slides and you know as we said but as we said we will share the slides afterwards yeah um, yeah so yes yeah. so does anyone have any questions about what we've spoke through that aren't in the chat box no, no that's good <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I will share the, um, obviously the presentation. If you do have any questions that you think of after, then feel free to email your class teacher, um, or you can obviously email me and I can help you, but most, um, all the children be in exam conditions. So with the SATS test, um, it's the what we do is we put some music on, so just some quiet music, which, we tend to put on quite a lot when they're doing focused writing um, or reading. Um, we ask them to sit quietly. We don't sit them at the end of tables or anything because that really does throw them off. Um, we just say to them, just work on your own, work through it quietly. Um, if you get stuck, try and sound out the word, try and use your phonics to help you. We reassure them lots that we can't obviously read it for them but we can um we can help them sort of in terms of saying right try and sound the word out and that kind of thing so they work quietly but they're used to doing that anyway so it's nothing nothing too scary for them um if if there is a child and we identify them as class teachers who really struggle with writing then we are allowed to um scribe for them in the reading paper because it's not testing their writing, it's assessing their reading. So that's something else to bear in mind if you have got a child that struggles with writing. We can help them in that way. So I think if that's, if there's no more questions, then thank you for logging on. Um, hopefully it's been helpful. Again, if anything else comes up, just, just email your class teacher or email me. Thank you very much. I'm going to end the... Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you have to end it. <laughs>